Good morning. Denise Dryden here. I'm so glad you joined me because this is a big topic for today. And uh, during these weekly presentations, I try to bring up something that I'm seeing with my clients, something I'm dealing with, something we're talking about at the coffee shop, something that sort of has our full attention, right? So today's topic is when things get big. And, you know, it's a little bit about overwhelm. It's about what happens when our emotions start hitting up against us and, and getting um, in the way. It's when there's a, too much information coming in and we don't know quite what to do with that. It's also when there's challenges that get bigger than what we know how to do. And this is life. This is what this is what it's all about. So I thought I'd break it down for you and kind of go through the ways that I approach the, the, the overwhelm, the challenges, the too much coming in. Because sometimes it's individual, definitely. Sometimes it's just, man, I'm feeling something. It could be the moon, it could be the, it could be the climate out there, it could be just something that I'm worrying about, right? And then sometimes it's relational. It's between me and another person. And then it's familial, which is, you know, I, I'm, I'm empty nesting now, but there was a time when, when, you know, having three kids in a house and a husband and a dog and a cat, <laughs> you know, after a while, it was just like, Ooh, somebody around here, this is getting crazy. Right. And it's also communal and it is collective. And I think that's the piece that I want to keep bringing in there, which is there's this collective piece, right? It means that there's something in the air out there that's bothering us, that's affecting us, that's shifting us, that we're not aware of, and it's tipping us. So the example I would use is that, you know, we can keep a, a somewhat moderately managed, you know, well um, oiled, you know, machine, like a life that kind of moves along just, just fine. And then something comes in and you're like, I can deal, deal with that. Whether it's a sick parent, whether it's a child who's had something happen at school and they're really upset, whether it's bullying or they don't like a teacher or they, they, can't, they can't grasp a subject or there's you know, a lot of problems going on at school, right? And, and so we add these to our little you know, conveyor belt of life, right? And each one of those in and of themselves can be a little stressful. And then when we add them all together, there's a tipping point. And what I'm here to say is that regardless of how you think all of this is going along right now, there's a lot of collective energy, whether it's astrological seven planets in the house of Aquarius, whether it is, you know, the concern over our financial industry, our government elections, our you know, all of the information that's coming out on censoring and blocking so that some people talk, some people don't, that has to affect us each individually in our family and in the collective. That makes sense. Okay. So where I want to start first is pick a topic, any topic that comes in, whether it's the revelations that are coming out over the election, the, um, the, the idea that you just got some news from, from a family member about a parent or about your teen, right? Pick a topic. It doesn't really matter. So the first thing to really talk about is the topic can be very small or it can be very big. So the topic in and of itself can be mild, but it's just enough to tip us off. Or it could be really big, which sometimes we think we can handle and sometimes we can't. So there's the first idea of what is actually happening, right? Let's define it, what that is. The second thing is the size of it. Is this a small, medium, or large, or a ginormous situation? Um, so the example that I would, would use is um, last year, after being settled for two years, the people who owned the house sold it. And it, it was cool. You know, I figured, you know, it'll take two or three months, you know, to get out. And they sold it to someone who said, you have two weeks to get out. Now, that is a topic that I thought I could deal with, but the size of it, right? You know, it got really big all of a sudden of how to find a place in two weeks to move to. So the size of it matters. How we, you know, are able to handle it. And then the third thing is the speed. Does it come in slowly? Drip, 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 where we think, ah, I, I, is that what I thought I saw? 
you know, I'm, I'm getting a little e inkling that, that something's going on in this marriage that isn't good. And I don't know what it is. Drip, 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 drip. Or does it, you know, suddenly come in like a, like a, like a huge tsunami, which is, I just found out this information. Or I just, my mom was fine and then all of a sudden she was in a car accident and it's not okay. So think about the speed of which something comes in. So there's the topic, right? The subject. And then there's the size of it. How big is this? And and each of these are, are doable in and of themselves. It's just that when this combination hits you and you're sort of going along at life at a certain pace, it can, it can throw you off. Or the speed. How fast does it come in? So things that happen is that you tip, you know, you wobble, <laughs> you fall, you fall flat on your face. You're like, I don't know if I can do this. And, or there's uncertainty. Like everything I thought I knew is now starting to crumble. And I think that's where we're going in the next um, four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks is there's a lot of uncertainty coming up. So, you know, this is sort of like the, the, here's some tools to get you in line because as things start to come forward in, you know, kind of the reality of where we are in our culture, where we are with COVID, where we are with, with the status of the future, there's a lot of uncertainty. Okay. Now, the other thing that can happen is when we tip is that we go numb and we shut down and we go into denial like, you know, uh, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, I'm going to just just pretend it isn't there or I'm going to um, withdraw and go silent. Um, and that's that makes sense to me as well. Another thing is that, you know, it's kind of like, hey, I'm doing everything I can to keep this this life moving along. So there's anger, there's explosiveness, there's blame. Like if you didn't, then I would. It's kind of like that, that thing where, you know, you're not helping me carry all of this burden. And so this is an individual thing, right? <laughs> and the other thing is that we can go into different levels of trauma, which is, you know, I, I've been ignoring that this hurts, that this hurts, that this hurts. And then when something, when it gets a little bigger or it comes in a little faster, right? Or a new topic comes in, it's like uh, you st we start experiencing that mental looping of playing it over and over and over again and not being able to let go of it. And it affects our nervous system and it gets in the way. So when we have this carefully set up life, this carefully set up matrix, it makes sense that when something comes in that rattles it, collapses it, disintegrates it, dismantles it, sometimes, you know, our skill level, our ability to handle this is <laughs> we do the best we can, right? And that's why I'm here talking each week is that I know we do the best we can and with a little bit of awareness, there are some ways that we can we can understand um, ways. To, <laughs> that, a little bit understand ways, that's pretty funny. Um, that we have something solid to grasp a hold of, okay? And that's what this is about. So what helps when something comes in, when the topic or the size of it or the speed of it comes in is to get to balance first, right? Find out you, know, you can slow down this. You can slow down the pace. You can sort of like try to contain the size of it, right? You can reach to your support systems, which makes sense. You know, how, how do I support myself when this happens? You know, can I take some time off? Do I have people I can go to? Do I have a coach or a therapist in line? How do I talk about this if I need to talk? How do I get outside if I need to walk it out? How do I get to my spiritual support if that's what I need? How do I, grant, you know, get into the systems that support me? And then the skill sets. What skills can I actually use? And so I have 300 videos that you can go back about how to balance, how to breathe, how to find your center, how to, what tools to use when you're angry, when you're confronted. So you go back and look at those. They're always there. Because what happens is it, if we ignore this, this topic that came in or the size of it or the speed of it, it, it means that we're in that denial stage. And, you know, I kind of thought about this. Is this about acceptance? Is this about, you know, surrender? And I have a, a really lovely friend at coffee and she said, maybe it's just about confirming it. Like, oh, that's really what I never wanted to face that might be going on. 
And so, you know, for me, what, what's been happening with the confirming is, is finding out these sort of conspiracy theories, these sort of ideas of certain personalities, right? It's like, yeah, I don't believe that. Mm -mm, -uh. And then there's this, oh no, what if, what if it's right? What if it's right? And so there's that confirming. Or, you know, it, when you're dealing with a child who's acting sketchy, who's not, who's not getting up in the morning, who's, who's uh, missing assignments, and it's repetitive and repetitive, you're kind of like, I think something's going on, but I think he'll figure it out. And then that confirmation, oh my gosh, he's playing eight hours of video games in the afternoon or evening, right? That confirmation, boom, which validates us. You know, it gives us that chance to own it and to transform it into what we need it to be. And it gives us a chance to bring our determination forward. So I'll give you some tips because I always have tips as part of this because I'm not going to bring something up and leave you hanging, right? So the first thing always is to breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Stabilize. Use your breath to get back in your body because if you're not in your body, you're not any good to anybody. So you feel your feet, you feel your body, you feel your rib cage expand and you slow things down. You can go into slow motion with the right breath, right? <laughs> Second, break things apart into workable pieces, which is this is too big, but what I can do is I can work on this first or what I can do is I can work on this first and be very clear that I'm in full overwhelm, but this is what I can do right now. This is what I can do right now. So that's the second thing, break it into workable pieces. Um, number three, identify the real topic because usually, you know, when there's a topic coming up, kind of like, you know, there's something going on in the marriage and there's, it's off, it's off, it's off. And when you identify the real topic or issue and, and then kind of lift it up and look underneath and go bigger and bigger and bigger, then you know what you're really dealing with, right? So identify the real issue. It isn't that you guys get into um, little snarky comments all the time. It's that, is that maybe he's distracted and he isn't completely committed to wanting to talk to you or even dealing with this. And then now you know what the bigger picture is, right? Okay, so number four, this isn't personal. Whatever this topic is, even if it comes at you, it's not personal because it might involve your spouse. It might involve your daughter or your son. It might involve the political arena out there. It might involve a lot of revelations that we weren't ready for. This isn't personal. It didn't come to you and say, take that. So we use the Don Miguel Ruiz, which is take nothing personally, which is, okay, so now that this is going, I get to choose how I'm going to handle that. That's the best part. How, what am I going to do with that? How am I going to handle it? Number five, self-care. Self-care is not a luxury. I love that. I heard it from Lee Harris last week. It's not a luxury. It's the absolute most important thing. Are you sleeping? Are you drinking water? Do you have an, uh, a daily practice where you can mull things over, whether it's a walk outside, whether it's sitting in meditation, whether it's doing your um, divination cards, your tarot or your oracle cards? Is it the way that you support your system? So your daily care, your self-care is the most important thing that you can do. And, and to let those of, around you know, this I'm taking care of myself. This is how I'm going to feed myself during this time. I need X amount of time by myself. I need time in the bathtub. I need time to walk. You know, that self-care you advocate. Because when you're present and when you're paying attention and when you're addressing things, like it, it, nothing's going to happen that's really going to be successful until you're fully present, right? So get present. And the way to do that is to do self-care and take care of yourself first, right? And then the last one, number six, is to know that you can drop it. You can let it go. You can walk away like done, done. Whether it's a marriage, a job, a teacher, a, a house, location. You know, it's like I've done everything I know how to do here. This is not working. I'm not going to keep trying to put stress and stress and stress. I'm done. So you walk away. You quit it, you unfollow, you unfriend, you do whatever you need to do from that place of presence, from that place of self-care where you've explored it, right? From that place of balance. So these are the kind of things I do each week and I'm starting to ramp it up because our tools, our tools are expanding. We're going into quantum, sort of like what are the other sources that we can use when we don't know what to do? 
If you want some assistance with that or you want to bounce some ideas, always drop me a line. You can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com. Have a great Super Bowl. Have a great Sunday. And I'll see you next week.